Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. This week, news has been dominated by ESCOM, with a utility confirming a delay to the start of the Madupi power station only days before it announced its annual results. Terence Creamer has been following developments at the company and joins me to discuss some of the highlights. Terence, welcome to Second Take. Well, the week started with the Madupi announcement. Did this come as a surprise? I think yes and no. <clears throat> you know, yes, because there was so much political pressure around that uh, end of year deadline. And we had um, a visit um, earlier this year, a high level visit to the Madupi site. We had personal involvement of uh, Public Enterprises Minister Malusi Gagaba trying to get this project uh, and get commitments from the contractors and from Eskom that at the December 2013 deadline, which was already a delay from the initial deadlines for Madupi, uh, would be uh, sustained. And they got those commitments, and that wasn't so long ago. They were just after a 10-week strike at the, at the um, at Madupi site. And they got quite firm commitments that uh, uh, the contractors, Labour and Eskom had things in hand and that we'd be able to meet the deadline. But if you read between the lines at a lot of those press conferences, there were caveats all the time that we had to have a free run in terms of the labour activity on site. And that seems to have settled down, but apparently it took quite some time to get to a point where people are working uh, every day on that site. And there were also some concerns about uh, the welds being sorted out around the boiler welds, which I think seems to have uh, seems to be now in hand. Um, Hitachi put out a statement saying that 97% of the welds are in hand. And there was this caveat as well around the software, uh, the control and instrumentation on the plant. And that now seems to have been the, the last straw uh, that broke the, the deadlines back. And uh, the lo that, was, that really came in late June, early July, where some more factory acceptance tests uh, carried out in France failed. And I think then Eskom felt it had to put out a message to uh, the South African public that that deadline was unlikely to be met now by the end of the year. But if you look at what the IRP says, <coughs> as well as what Eskom has been saying in its annual report, they had never really put in writing that they would meet the 2013 deadline. They always had first half of 2014, but we're now talking about the second half of 2014. And we're also talking about additional costs. And these are substantial additional costs, uh, nearly 15 billion rand more to the price tag of the Madupi power station, which is already a, a very expensive piece of equipment because of the time we contracted that uh, power station. And it's now the price tag has risen to 105 billion rand. So f as to your question whether it was a surprise, yes and no, yes, because I think there was so much energy and effort put to really meeting that deadline. It's a huge embarrassment for the minister, as well as for Eskom and for these contractors. Whether it's going to be as late as the second half of 2014, it's also going to be interesting to see because Hitachi did put out this statement this week about saying that it's really got things in hand. And Alstom also put out a statement this week saying, yes, we, there are these problems, but they sort of hinting that they can still meet the deadlines outlined. Whether they're talking about the new deadlines outlined by Eskom or whether they're the uh, old deadlines is not 100% clear, but it seems to, me, seems to me they're talking about the December deadline. But I don't think anyone's going to hold to their breath. I think that um, it's most likely that this is going to not happen this year. And I think there's, there's also a lot of skepticism because of what's happened on that site, whether they can even meet earlier than the second half of 2014. The result showed a weak sales performance. What does this mean for ESCOM and for South Africa? Yeah, the, the sales performance is, is, was really quite surprising. Well, maybe again, not 100% surprising, but it really shows how weak a South African economy is performing. It also, I suppose, shows some the benefits of the energy efficiency drives that companies have been taking. And there were also some one-offs or uh, maybe two-offs in the sense that we had buybacks during the year. And then we had these massive strikes around the platinum belt, which I think reduced the overall offtake from Eskom. But really, we are back to between 2006 and 2007 levels. And we did have some disruptions in those periods, but they were generally limited to the Western Cape. So the questions have to be asked is why do we even talk about having disruptions to the power system when actually uh, we were running the system with fewer megawatts available 
back in 2006 and 2007 than we do today. And I think really the answer there is that we're doing a lot more, Eskom's doing a lot more maintenance around its plant and therefore a lot more is out um, and not available, especially during winter. The, 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 these winter maintenance, it's a new, very new thing for Eskom to be embarking on on scheduled maintenance during winter. So that's why the system remains tight. But on, on the demand side, things are pretty weak. And the outlook is, is not really strong either. Um, yes, we're hoping to recover as an economy, but we saw the IMF put out its forecast for only 2% growth for this year. And some uh, um, commentators are, are even questioning whether we'll get to that level. And uh, for 2014, the outlook is also not strong. And Eskom's already said that for the first two months of the new financial year, which started on April 1, they've had uh, more than 2% decline year on year in terms of uh, sales. So we're seeing that we, we're moving from, yes, we have a supply crisis, but we may be looking at something of a demand crisis. And Eskom went to some pains to say, look, we've got 3,000 megawatts of new connections that have approached us. And we have not turned one of the one single one of those projects away. So they're saying we are almost ready. <laughs> we really are willing and waiting to add new connections into the system. Because I think they realize they're bringing on two really big plants by 2019 now. And that's, that uh, capacity needs to be consumed by an economy that is pumping. Yes, we want energy efficiency and we need to put out the message that the system remains very critically tight at the moment. But at some point, we're going to have quite a lot of new capacity, and we really need this economy to be in a position to start absorbing that capacity for the sake of all of us, in the sense that we need the growth for to deal with the triple scourge of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. Utility also reported a surge in primary energy costs. This is a big worry. <coughs> you know, in the MYPD3 application, uh, Eskom uh, committed to sustaining its coal costs at 10% a year over the five-year period. And we saw that the coal costs in the year that was the last year of the MYPD2 were double that. In fact, primary energy was triple that. And what they've actually been given by the regulator in the MYPD3 is 8.6% for all their primary energy, which includes the diesel, which includes the water, and includes the coal. But the coal issue um, has become a critical I issue for Eskom, and I think it's clear that Eskom's going to be re approaching the uh, regulator using the regulatory clearing account, which allows them to claw back prudently incurred costs to say, look, we're not meeting our coal 10% increases. Unless something dramatic happens, I don't see them again in 2014, the current financial year, easily staying within the 10% uh, envelope. And then if they are going to be running their <coughs> open cycle gas turbines as aggressively as they've had to, <coughs> it's going to be very hard that the uh, primary energy is going to be sustained within the 8.6% window. So <coughs> I think we're going to be seeing a massive discussion around this. Um, the coal industry has been put on watch by everyone, by our government, by Eskom, and by itself. They realize we're hitting what people are calling a coal, coal cliff at Eskom. In the sense, by 2018, there's going to be a big drop off in the bulk supply to Eskom, and we need to find new supply for that. And if we don't find supply that is cost effective, the prices of coal for Eskom and for the consumer ultimately, because we are burning that coal to keep the lights on, are going to go up. So I think there's going to be a lot of focus on this issue of coal over the next few years. And unfortunately, I think it's not going to just be limited to an Eskom industry government discussion is going to actually influence every South African in the sense that I think at points Eskom is going to want to claw back some of these additionally incurred costs which are somewhat out of their control. They make it clear, you know, we have a regulated tariff, a regulated price, but we've got an unregulated coal input and it's 50 percent now. It's a full 50 percent of its uh, overall costs which have risen massively to around 55 cents, 54 cents or 58 cents and 50, uh, and their costs are coming in at 54 cents and full 50% of that is coal and primary energy related. So it's, it's not a, uh, it's not an easy equation to deal with and I'm not too sure um, that the country and Eskom fully knows how they're going to deal with it but they're putting everyone on notice that this is out of control and out of their control and they're going to have to 
have some serious discussions, not just with the shareholder, not just with the industry, but pro probably with the regulator so that they can start covering those costs. Terence, thank you very much. That is the Second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.